Welcome in. Today we're doing a deep dive into Leon Bailey. Oh yeah. You've been hearing the buzz, especially after that Electric Champions League match where Aston Villa pulled off a 1-0 win. Yeah, against Bayern Munich. Against Bayern Munich. Incredible. Talk about a storybook finish, right? For sure. And while the headlines focused on 19-year-old John Duran's incredible goal just minutes after stepping onto the pitch, we're kind of shifting the focus to Leon Bailey. Right. His recent form, the upcoming Jamaican national team decisions, there's a lot to unpack. And we're diving deep into all of it. Yeah. We've got insights from dedicated fan channels like mm. Talawa TV press releases, even Aston Villa's own media match day programs, social media, you name it. So let's set the scene a bit. Aston Villa beats Bayern Munich, same scoreline as their legendary 1982 victory. 1982, deja vu much. It really is remarkable. What's fascinating here is that this wasn't just any win. Right. It signifies Aston Villa's resurgence as a European contender after decades, and Bailey is at the forefront of this resurgence. And this is where things get really interesting, right? Because you've got this young, incredibly talented striker, John Duran, coming off the bench and scoring a screamer in that match. Yeah. How does this impact Bailey, who's trying to cement his own place in the team? This is where understanding the tactical nuances becomes crucial. While both players occupy attacking positions, they bring different strengths to the table. Duran's goal, while impressive, doesn't directly overshadow Bailey's contributions. Oh. In fact, Duran's ability to capitalize on opportunities late in the game could potentially open up more space for Bailey to operate. Hmm. Telewa TV captured some interesting fan reactions. Right. There are those questioning Bailey's commitment to the Jamaican national team, especially with his focus on club football. And then there are others who see this as a sort of redemption arc. Okay. Drawing parallels to players like Mason Greenwood. And it's essential to provide the full context here. Bailey's history with the Jamaican Football Federation, the JFF, has been, let's say, complex. Yeah. There have been disagreements, miscommunications, and moments where both sides seem to be at odds. For those unfamiliar, could you elaborate on these complexities with the JFF a bit further? Certainly. One point of contention involved player treatment and resources. Bailey, along with other players, voiced concerns about travel arrangements, training facilities, and the overall support system provided by the JFF. And then there was that issue with the Gold Cup in 2021. Exactly. Bailey withdrew from the squad, citing a lack of communication and what he perceived as a lack of respect from the Federation. This incident amplified the existing tensions, leaving many to question his commitment to representing Jamaica. Okay, so there's clearly a lot of history there, but then there's also this compelling narrative of Bailey's journey, a kid from Jamaica making it to the Premier League and the Champions League. Absolutely. For young Jamaican players, particularly those aspiring to play professionally, Bailey represents a beacon of hope. He embodies the belief that regardless of where you come from with talent, dedication, and a bit of luck, you can achieve your dreams. He's this generation's Ricardo Gardner. It's more than just football. It's about national pride. So how does all of this factor into Bailey's current situation? It's a complex equation with a lot of moving parts. On one hand, you have Bailey's undeniable talent and his growing influence at Aston Villa, a club clearly invested in his development both on and off the pitch. And we see that reflected in their marketing materials, right? Yeah. I mean, they're featuring him prominently in their match day programs. Social media campaigns even chose him to wear the captain's armband during preseason. Right. That's a big deal. It certainly suggests a level of trust and confidence from the club. Now, some of this might be strategic, aligning with their marketing goals and targeting new demographics. But it also speaks to Bailey's growing maturity as a player and as a brand himself. And you can even see it in his interviews lately. Yeah. He's more articulate, composed, and media savvy. He's really stepping into that leadership role. He's gone from raw talent with immense potential to a more refined and polished professional capable of handling the pressures and expectations that come with playing at this level. Okay, so we've got Aston Villa recognizing Bailey's value, but what about the Jamaican national team? The JFF is announcing their squad on Friday. Do you think he'll be included? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? There's a real need for a player of Bailey's caliber in the national team. Jamaica needs players who can change the game in an instant, who can create opportunities out of nothing. And right now, no one on that team comes close to what Bailey brings to the table in terms of speed agility and that creative spark in the final third. Precisely. And it's not just about his individual brilliance, it's about the impact he has on the entire team. His presence alone 
elevates the play of those around it. And imagine the message it would send to those young players we were talking about earlier, those kids looking up to Bailey as a role model, seeing him back in the national team colors fighting for their country. That's a powerful image. It could be a turning point, not just for Bailey's career, but for Jamaican football as a whole. Okay, but let's play devil's advocate for a moment. Let's say Bailey is included in the squad. Can they move past the baggage, the disagreements, the controversies? Can both sides put the past behind them and focus on the bigger picture? It's the elephant in the room, isn't it? And it's not simply about burying the hatchet. It's about establishing a healthy and productive working relationship. So how do they do that? What needs to happen for both Bailey and the JFF to move forward in a positive direction? It feels like it has to be a two-way street, right? Absolutely. Transparency and open communication are paramount. The JFF needs to demonstrate a genuine commitment to addressing the concerns raised by Bailey and other players. This could involve improvements to infrastructure, providing better resources, and ensuring a more inclusive and player-centric environment. And on Bailey's side, he needs to approach the situation with a degree of professionalism and a willingness to engage in constructive dialogue. If both sides can come to the table with a shared goal of elevating Jamaican football, then perhaps just perhaps they can find common ground and build a more positive and successful future. And imagine what that could mean. Think about it. Leon Bailey back in the national team, potentially leading Jamaica to the 2026 World Cup. It's a long shot, sure, but after everything we've discussed, wouldn't that be something special? It would be a testament to the transformative power of reconciliation, both on a personal and national level. And it speaks to a larger theme we see throughout Bailey's journey, the idea of defying expectations, overcoming obstacles, and proving doubters wrong. It really makes you think, doesn't it? Whether you're a diehard Aston Villa fan, a devoted follower of the Reggae Boys, or just someone intrigued by the stories behind the sport, Leon Bailey's journey offers a glimpse into the complexities of ambition, national identity, and the pursuit of excellence. And that's what makes this deep dive so compelling, the intersection of individual narratives with larger societal conversations. So where do you stand? What does Leon Bailey's journey mean to you? Food for thought.